then if I don't go do what I gotta do, then my son won't, won't have everything that he needs. Like, you know, I'm the person I want to be daddy of pride on my shoulders. So, you know, I get up every morning, do what I gotta do, do what I'm supposed to do, for and so my son's taken care of. How much has the changed you this last year? I'm a lot. Um, I just think, you know, day in and day out, like I was saying, man, just, you know, sometimes you don't want to do things, but I mean, at the end of the day, you got to look, look at the opportunity. I mean, I'm in a position where hopefully I'll make this generation change and, and, and be able to have a job and I can be able to do what I love and stand that I have passion for and that be my job. And then that can bring changes to generations to come in my family. What was it like for you to have him there for the honor fall? Uh, man, it's exciting time. Uh, he wasn't too he wasn't too happy when I tried to give him back to his mom and title walk, but so that's how we ended up going down title walk together. So I mean he's just you know, it's just a new shot of light in my life and every single day I mean he brings new adventures to me and you know just it, it's been amazing to be able to finish practice and then go home and be with my son. Was that the first game he's been to this year? Had, had, had he been to any other games this yeah, year? Yeah, he came to the first game, you know, uh, not a, uh, I'm kind of like a germ, germ free guy, so I didn't uh, want him out in the cold and I don't want him getting sick. So, uh, I mean, he came to like the first four home games and then uh, kind of backed off of it, started getting cold. And the iron ball ended up turning out to be 75 degrees, so we said, oh, let's do it. How's your impressions of the JR Reed as a football player? Very good football player. Uh, just from talking to him, he knows a lot about the game, and you know, just sitting back there, you know, talking the ball with him. He knows a lot about being able to read formations, and you know, just when it comes to offense, the offensive things, the tendencies and stuff, he picks up well on it. What is this experience like hanging out with other star players that you always really watch on television now you're spending some time with? I mean, you gotta respect all these guys' games, so I'm mean, just kind of getting to be around them. It's, it's pretty good experience, and you know, just kind of sitting around talking ball or just kind of just hanging out. I mean, it's good both ways. What have been some of the things that have made you happy about your decision to play this last season? Uh, about to graduate, and, you know, that's big me. Um, I got to spend this whole last year with my son, and, you know, and, I mean, that was most important to me. And, you know, now I'm getting ready to go into a situation where I want to play the bowl game with my team. So we'll see. And, um, you know, finish off a successful season and hopefully we'll get to the wins. And what are your feelings now about preparing for the next few months and then the draft in April? Uh, I don't think you're going to have any feelings about it. You just got to roll with it. How's your outfit field activity prepared you to be a leader going forward? Um, so I'm the president of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee at Auburn and uh, so I take the role in that. Um, it's also a great supporter cast behind me in that and my advisor Janice Robinson and also the rest of the team on board. And, you know, it's just one of those things where I've been able to expand my leadership role, um, sitting on the SEC uh, committee council for football, for SAC. Um, it's been an awesome experience being able to expand my leadership to that. And I mean, for, uh, I give all credit to the people that have helped me along the way and to be able to do so because, you know, at the end of the day, it's a lot of people that talk about student athletes and things, but I mean, they're not really trying to do things to help them. So, I mean, for me to be able to have my voice and be able to speak up about certain things, it was been very beneficial. Did you watch the game on Saturday? Uh, LSU, Georgia? Yeah. Uh, Burroughs said that they tried to do defensively a lot of things you guys did against them. Why were you guys able to have success against you? Uh, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, but, I mean, we were able to just go out there and, you know, just be able to apply pressure on Joe and uh, from the three-man rush. And, you know, it was something that Coach Steele put in the week before. And we were kind of like a whirlwind because it was different. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that Coach Steele put in. And, you know, it was able to put us in the best position to win it. What, what is it about him that it seems like when pressure comes at him, he has the answers? He is able to squeeze out of it or you know find a quick pass. I mean, what is it about him? He's a great football player. That's what they do. What's your description of the Georgia Auburn rivalry? What are sort of your memories of it through the years? Uh, this guy has ups and downs. Uh, I mean, he's one of the greatest rivalries in college football. Cut is that? Because I mean, it goes all the way back. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's very through the bloodline of Auburn and Georgia. I mean, Tell them you're going to show up on game day exactly how it is. Going back to that 3 1 7 look you guys used against LSU, is that something that Coach Seals used before or that he had any cut ups of, or is that just he came up with that idea and was just I like, hey, know. let's do it? Like, Coach Steele is a genius in my eyes because, like, at the end of the day, like, 
we could be sitting there and like Coach Steelers is like, all he needs to know is the formation. He already knows the call. Like, he has his call sheet on game day, but if you watch him, he never looks at it. And like, it's like one of those things where I'm like, like I just don't know how he does it. And I mean, yeah, I mean, again, he's done it for a long time, but I mean, it's just still amazing. It's just like, because when we put in that defense, um, it was it was just something new. I mean, you know, I was kind of trying to wonder like, how it's going to work out. This is as a practice because it's simulating it versus Scott team. And it's doing well, but I mean, Saturday, you know, it's different. So I was like, I was just curious as how it would work. I mean, I was going to try my best in there. I mean, you know, if we were able to do what we did. What's it say about your defense and Coach Steele overall that you got using, <laughs> using that uh, kind of work on LSU to an extent? I mean, no, nobody else really held them in check like you did this year. And then to see Georgia attempted and not really have that kind of success either. Uh, I mean, Coach Steele, I mean, like, like I said, I mean, he's a genius, man. And, when we, we he never puts us in a position that he thinks is gonna that, that he thinks is gonna hurt what we do as a defense or what we do as players. And um, it's just been one of those things, you know, I've been blessed to be in a situation with Coach Steele because at the end of the day, I mean, he's one of the coaches that, you know, he actually cares about what his players have to say. So if we're going through something on walk on Thursday, and Coach Steele will tell you, if you're not comfortable with it, tell me now we'll scratch it and we'll play the base and we'll play base. So, I mean, it's one of those things where, like, Coach Steele's been open to communicating with us. So, I mean, it's been very beneficial for us because sometimes, you know, at the end of the week, if you're not really feeling confident in certain things, and, you know, it's not something you need to hold back. So when you're out on Saturday, you mess up. You know, you say it and you got to be able to expand and talk to Coach Steele about it. Do you I mean, feel you, like you should get more head coaching consideration? Um, I mean, I just have to tell you that I mean, you, you've been around Coach Steele for four years. We've seen some of the videos of his pregame talks in the locker room. What's your favorite Coach Steele story from the last four years? <laughs> uh, I don't know. There's a lot of them. Uh, maybe the one before Washington game that they put out. They put out. There was one before uh, Georgia game two years ago. Uh, there's a lot of them. I can remember all of them. So, I mean, man, he's just an intense guy. Yeah. I mean, before the game, man, he's going to get you pumped. I mean, the offense, defense, it don't matter. I mean, the hoot and hollering, I mean, he's one of those guys. But, I mean, he also, he treats us like pros. So, I mean, you know, he doesn't have to talk a lot. He doesn't talk a lot in practice. He says very little during practice, matter of fact. And, I mean, he corrects. But, I mean, outside of that, he says very little. What was the one before the Georgia game? Uh, I can't remember it to the team, but uh, I remember it. <laughs> is there something about your game that you think you'll be able to showcase on the NFL level that you weren't able to showcase at the, on the collegiate level? Um, something that may stand out more? Not really. I mean, I feel like I'm. A, I feel like I mean, just being able to be consistently dominant, whether it's at this level or the next. Um, it's one of those things that you know, if you want to be a player for a long time, and if you say that you really want to go and be a type of player that earns that gold jacket, then you got to be able to show those type of things, whether at, at the highest level or the best competition in the world. Uh, you know, uh, I've really had a tough decision with this right now, and uh, this is kind of one of those things, you know, I, I got to really think about. And, you know, I'm the leader on my team, so I mean, it's just, that's how I think about it. Um, you know, I've been through a lot, I've been through a lot with my teammates, and, you know, it's just kind of one of those things that you got to really take into consideration because. Like I said earlier, like if it's something you're gonna do, just do it. And if it's something that you don't want to do, then don't do it. I mean, there's no need to talk about it. When you go to the next level, what'll be something that you miss about your days being an Auburn Tiger? I mean, just the camaraderie and brotherhood, you know, just being at Auburn University, uh, being able to sit around and you know, those long, long days, man. Because I mean, the next level is a job, and uh, you know, right now you're being a student athlete. You know, you're gonna see your brothers every single day, hang around. I'm starting to slowly realize that it's the last one, so uh, I'm just kind of taking them in, you know. Just, you know, it's just something that, you know, is memorized and I'll have forever. And then you'll be um, recognized for two awards um, for your teammates, but not only that, you're doing the service. Why is giving that to your community so important? I'm not, I'm not gonna say anything and say like, you know, I'm the best person in this area or whatever, but I mean, that's such a big, big part of me because, you know, I've, I've been blessed with a lot and been blessed to be put in a situation where God's given me a lot of good things that I've done. And it's just something that I want to be able to give back. Because, you know, I said it and I said, you know, 
how do I become the man I want my son to look up to? And, you know, in certain ways, you know, I want my son to copy what I've done. You know, there's some things that, you know, you try to not have to copy in certain ways.